White clouds float over the yellow fields. It is September and the corn is ready to harvest. Driving through the Yolo County farmlands, I can see that it was a good summer. Tomato trucks moving slow on the farm roads. Tractors moving farm equipment. In a pasture north of Davis, I can see that the colt that was new in the spring now runs and plays, sometimes even hopping. The road is empty for a few minutes and I pull the car over and get out. 61 years old with a birthday approaching. I am no farmer, but I love good tilled earth. White clouds float over yellow fields. I scoop up some dirt in my hands. And these words from our freshly minted poet laureate, James Lee Job, and my friend. Welcome, James. Glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah, it's really fun you could come in. So you were literally just seated or ordained as poet laureate on, uh, in mid-September. Right? On 9-11, yeah, of all days. Right. Uh, yeah, it was going to be the 25th, and I got a call from the now uh, laureate emeritus, <laughs> Andy Jones, saying, we're going to hand the torch over on the 11th instead. And I thought... There's a torch? <laughs> was there literally a No, there was not a torch. Darn. And uh, what really uh, amused me, too, was there was no laurel wreath. You know, the word poet laureate, laureate comes from the same Latin root word as was laurel. Right. And in ancient times in Greece, they wore them. Yeah. I thought, mm, well, okay, that's all right. Well, thinking down the line, you can implement some new traditions for the, the next handover. But for now, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's your job. And so tell us, what does a poet laureate do what are you, what are your job responsibilities in in different places uh, it's set up differently what they want in Davis what they ask for is uh, that you have a poem ready for specific functions like the Martin Luther King parade right. and the Fourth of July fireworks and picnic and they really don't ask that much but they like you when you apply to have some sort of agenda then they judge from the nominees and choose you that way mm -hmm. and so my agenda uh, uh, is not too complex. Uh, the <laughs> first project, is, which is already underway, is we're going to put uh, poetry from local poets on posters in downtown storefronts. And I'm already collecting those. Uh, another project is uh, I've already made myself available to the school district to go into classrooms or assemblies, and I just today started hearing back from them. So that might, that might happen very soon, too. Two longer-term projects is... Uh, you've probably noticed around Davis the book giveaways, yep. the little book nooks we have here and there. I'm going to set up one for poetry that will be in City Hall, but they want me to do it after they do a remodel. There's a remodel <laughs> about to happen, okay. and they want it after that. And this is a t it's a two-year term, and I want to go out of the two-year term uh, with an anthology of, of Davis poets. Nice, and there are a good number of poets here in Yeah, Davis. especially since I'm going to include poets uh, for the sake of the campus, right. poets who have just uh, uh, gone to school here or taught here. Yeah. And so I'm hoping to get some work from Gary Snyder, who taught here for 15 Ooh. years, and I know a little bit. One, yeah. one of the first, that was one of the first ways I really got turned on to poetry, was reading Gary Snyder in yeah. college. Yeah. Well, he used to bring me into his class. He got to know me from a magazine I was publishing when I was still in, in Sacramento uh, in the 90s. I moved here in 96. Mm -hmm. Uh, called One Dog Press, and I got his address from somewhere, and I started sending them to him, just sending them to him. And finally, uh, I got a letter back one day with a check that said, I'll do my Gary Snyder impression here, uh, I don't recall subscribing to your fine journal. <laughs> However, I do like it, so I'm sending a check for a subscription now. And I never cashed it. I framed both the letter and the check, <laughs> and they hang over my desk to this day. Good call. Yeah, but he started bringing me in, uh, like once a semester, to talk to his class, I always say about how to be a unsuccessful poet, but how to be uh, a, a locally based poet. Right, you know, right. And, 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 and on that note, well, well, two things. You are widely published, both online and in print anthologies. Your poetry is, is a matter of record. You can there. Google me. You can. <laughs> and you also, you hold a couple of very vibrant local poetry, uh, regular poetry readings. So let's talk about those for a minute. The first one I inherited, uh, Allegra Silverstein, who was also the first Poet Laureate of Davis, was among a group of people at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Davis who started a monthly reading back in the mid-90s. And uh, in the beginning, the first couple of them, I understand, it was mostly just people from the church themselves just reading poems. Yeah. But it evolved quickly. 
uh, into a regular poetry reading series with poets coming from all over to read. Right. And she ran it for 22 years and handed it off to me, oh, or 21 years, I think, and handed <laughs> it off to me uh, early last year. And so I took over that. And that's the third Friday of the month at 7.30 in the library at the UU Church. Right. And I have poets from all over the region come and read, and there's an open mic, too. Does that one have a name? Uh, the Other Voice. The Other Voice, that's right. The Other Voice. Um, and I wanted to start a, a series because the UU Church is kind of out in the sticks. Yeah. And in the winter months when it's dark early, it's kind of hard to find that, that last cut off on the fat one <laughs> right. road, if you don't know where it is. Right. I wanted to start a series that was in town and during the daytime because so many... Uh, People in, in the crowd who are a little older would say, I have a hard time driving at night. Yeah. Oh, the lights. I wish I could come. So I wanted a daytime series that was in town along a bus route and had a parking lot. And luckily, the Davis Arts Center stepped up. Right. And so and that one happens on well, a... Third Sunday yeah. at 2 p.m. And, uh, of course, the, I don't think Unitrans is that active on Sunday, but the 42 loop bus for Yellow Bus stops right in front of the place. Right. There's a, they got their own parking lot. And it's easy to find in the city. And uh, that's uh, uh, 2 p.m., two featured poets uh, on the third Sunday Yeah. every month. And that's the Davis Arts Center Poetry Series. Okay. Yeah. So when were you bitten by the poetry bug, as it were? I was eight years old. Okay. I've been writing for 53 years. Uh, once I started, I never actually stopped at all. Uh, the first, I, I won a contest at eight, yeah. a, a poetry contest that got me some notice. And at the time, my parents were divorcing, and I was like the most unnoticed kid in the world to me. Mm. I felt like I was invisible. So suddenly there was like these people, and they took me around to these assemblies and schools, and it would be, and I'm right. thinking, yeah. Affirmation. Yeah, this yeah. is good, you know. And uh, I just kept at it. And by my teens, I was hitting the open mics, uh, bouncing back and forth between my, my parents in uh, Baltimore and in the Dallas area hitting the open mics and starting to get a, a few featured readings here and there. And this was before uh, Al Gore invented the internet. <laughs> so I was mostly getting my work into small zines right. uh, with things like meat quarter, uh, meat whistle quarter, quarterly. Some of them had some really odd a names. A fine publication, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, uh, Nerve <laughs> Cowboy. And, um, you know, I, I had a life, I had to work for a living, so uh, I tended to have a day job. I didn't want to pursue the, the teaching college route, which so many poets, published poets do. Right. They teach for a living. Um, I don't really like crowds of people all that much. Right. All day, all those months out of a year, that just sounded like hell to me. Uh, so uh, eventually I wound up with a career in radio for 25 years, and that was kind of nice. That's over now, and um, besides this, I'm on the board of directors for the Interfaith Winter Rotating Shelter, mm -hmm. and that keeps me busy, and I'm pretty busy at my church. Yeah. So you mentioned working with the schools. What would you say to a young person who says, you know, I really want to write, but I don't know if I can, and, or I, I know I can write, but I don't know if I can read in front of others? What would your advice be to them? Well, I would say, first of all, yes, you can write. It's just a matter of finding what it is you want to write, then mm -hmm. you'll find it much easier once you, once you learn that. And the best way to do that is to experiment, write many different things. Yeah. And, and you know, if you're not comfortable with it, you don't have to show it to anybody. And um, I write a new poem every day, Is that right? and I have for years. I have thousands of the damn things, <laughs> but that doesn't mean they're all coming out into the light of day, you know? Uh, maybe a tenth of them do, less than that. Right. You know? So the first poem you shared with us evoked, you know, driving along those, those lovely county roads with the... the golden autumn light. It's a favorite thing of mine. Yeah, so poetry of place, I imagine, is very important when you are it always a poet has laureate. Been. It always has been, even before that. But when I started, uh, when I began back in the spring pushing for this, uh, I really focused in on our area. I've always written a lot, especially about, about Pewter Creek. I love Pewter Creek Yeah. and Cash Creek. Yeah. And um, when I was younger and a little healthier, I hiked all those trails. You know, I know them very intimately. Right. And uh, so, yeah, I've really built up a lot of Davis material hmm. uh, lately. But right. when I was living in other places, I, I wrote about my hometown, Baltimore. I wrote about East Texas, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's hear. You told me you wrote this other poem. You sent it to the city yeah, council. Yeah, the first poem that I read for you, um, I read 
at the ceremony where I became Poet Laureate. And everyone was so nice and so wonderful, and the chief of police was there, and I chatted with him, and the fireman's boss was there, and I chatted with him. And they're also, I thought, well, I'm going to go home and write a poem for all these people. <laughs> so I went home and I wrote this poem. And I sent it to them. Morning light begins, pale through the window. Just a whisper in the darkness at first, and then later a blue sky cloaked in a golden sun. Slowly, slowly, the valley rises, and I rise too. Today is here. This is now, I tell myself. Time to take roll call. James, present. Let the morning begin. Nice. Nice. So, what's your first official duty as Poet Laureate? What do you got coming up? Uh, the poster the poster project. Yeah. Uh, that, that's underway now. Uh, uh, Rachel Hartso at the city is, mm -hmm. uh, found, has already found the storefronts, and I'm starting to gather the poems. Great. And there's, you know, our downtown is so in flux right now, and there's so much discussion about its future and even the, the immediate problems with, you know, with parking and vacancies and things like that. So I love the projects that have, have come about through, through the Arts Alliance and, mm -hmm. and Rachel's work um, for really drawing attention to, you know, taking a vacant space and making something beautiful, intriguing, and maybe even useful out of it. Yeah, I really hate to see some of those buildings. And I don't want any of them to be empty. But, right. Uh, like the the music, the the building that Watermelon Music moved out of. Mm -hmm. That's a really lovely building. It's a shame it's been sitting empty all these months uh, since they moved over to West Davis. Yeah. I understand why they did. They needed more space. They needed more rehearsal rooms and things. But uh, in a city that does not have a mall or a Walmart mm -hmm. sucking the life out of downtown, it's really a shame that those buildings aren't full. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's see what, what poetry can do to invigorate it a I little bit, so. right? So if someone wants to um, attend, let's let's say the Saturday thing, uh, tell us again. It's at the Davis Arts Center. They're sponsoring That's Sunday. it. Third Sunday. Sunday uh, third Sunday, uh, F and Covell, uh, just show up. And if, you, and if you want to read, you just... Uh, that's at the other one. We have okay. the open mic at the Other Voice at the Unitarian Church. Okay. Two featured poets and an open mic. And the one at the Davis Arts Center is just featured poets. All right. I read a lot of others' poetry, actually, out at the, the Unitarian churches, you, you churches, you know. Um, I've never been brave enough to read any of my own, but I haven't ruled it out completely. Well, come out. Yeah, Please I might. Do. I might, one of these days. Yeah. I've got to work up my own courage for that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, <laughs> and it's a nice way to meet other poets, because people who come to poetry readings usually write poetry. Right. Yeah. So do you have a Facebook page as Poet Laureate? Uh, no, just my own Facebook page, James Lee Job. I have a blog uh, where I blog all my own writing. Okay. And um, that's james-lee-job.blogspot.com. But if okay. you Google me, it's easy to find. Right. And I'm, I've just started a second blog for uh, Yellow County Poets uh, that nobody gets denied. Whatever you send me, I'll put on the blog for you. Okay. And just email it to me at jamesleejoe at gmail.com. Okay, see, that might be an easier way to start than getting up and reading in front of people, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for taking up the mantle. I, I, I mean, I firmly believe that a, a community that's enriched by poetry and other arts is, is a better community. I do so, too. Yeah. And thanks for joining us here on The City Considers. And Thank we you for hope, having me. We hope you will come back and, uh, and share more of your poetry down the line. Anytime. I'm only about a half a mile away. I know you are. All <laughs> right. You've been watching The City Considers here at Davis Media Access. And I don't think I ever introduced myself. I'm Autumn Lepe Renault. My pleasure to host Poet Laureate. James Lee Job today. Thanks. <laughs>